Hey, Uppity Unicorn here. I wanted to discuss why black men want and desire light skinned daughters, red bone daughters, high yellow daughters, racially ambiguous daughters, exotical daughters. Okay. There is one reason. These men don't intend for their daughters to be married or bedded by other than black men. No black man gets up in the morning and imagines that he's raising a daughter for a white man to marry, for an Asian man to marry, for an Arab man to marry. They assume naturally that they are raising a daughter for another black man to make a wife out of. And the reason they want high yellow daughters, light-skinned daughters, red bone daughters, biracial daughters, racially amb- ambiguous daughters, exotical daughters, is in hopes that that other black man that he sends her off to when he can no longer care for his beloved daughter will treat his child right. And he knows that that is the complexion for protection. In reality, light-skinned women look about as good as dark-skinned women. Most people are quote-unquote average at best. Most of us are around a good five or a good six. People notice you a lot when you're a seven. They freak out about you if you're an eight. They're intimidated by you if you're a nine. And they probably won't even talk to you if you're a ten because they're afraid. Okay? is what it is. The girls who get the most attention at school and at the club are not the tens. Janet Jackson said it very clearly, who spent most of her life as a 10. Uh, What is it? I see you staring out the corner of my eye. You seem uneasy, want to approach me, throw me a line. But then something inside you grabs you, says, who am I? I know exactly because it happens with all the guys. And so she goes on to say, so like she's pretending to be the guy when it's like, so you, so what you want to do? And then she says, come on and talk to me. And then the man says, promise you won't even have an attitude. And she's like, I'll let you sit right next to me. And then she says to him, don't join a list with the other fool. That's not the way to be. Yes, it's cool. And yes, I'm in the mood. Intimidation's got that mind, okay? That is the song. That is the hook. That is the war cry of the girl in the club who's a 10. I don't know how many times my mother has been out with with a woman that she's more beautiful than. But that woman would get all of the attention because men felt like their egos were more protected if they tried to holler at her friend with a wondering eye than, you know, my mom who's, who's black Barbie. It's like, mm, 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 I'll, I'll take that one, right? And sometimes I'll talk to her just to get into proximity with my mother, right? Just to be able to stand next to her and get a good look at her without getting their feelings hurt. So we're going to go ahead and just put tins to the side. We don't have to talk about them anymore. We love you. We praise you. And if I see you, I'm going to love you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to be good to you because I know it's a, it's, it's a lonely road. I get it. It's lonely at the top. People don't pick the apples from the top of the tree because it's, it's too hard to get up there. Apple falls to the ground. Looks all right. Guy rubs it off, bites it. Low hanging fruit. Simple. Middle of the tree. He's got to think about it. How bad does he want it? Up high. He's not even going to try. So with respect to you, Tins, let's not address you again, (laughs) okay? Um, But pivoting back to my original point, this is the reason they are trying, they are trying to, you know how the Bible says, put on the full armor of God? They are trying to dress their daughters in the full armor of protection, which lies in their complexion. You can be an overweight, light-skinned chick and still get a good husband. You can be an average looking. You could be the, the, the identical twin of a dark skinned girl 
I literally know twins. <laughs> they were identical twins. One was coffee black and one was milk white <laughs> at my university. And all the guys thought, you know, the dark skinned one was ugly, but they all tried to holler at her twin. And you look at them in the face, it's, it's the same girl. Same girl. <laughs> Liter- same girl. Okay. They are trying to. So what I guess what I'm saying is that black men don't need you to explain colorism to them. They don't need you to break it down from panel to panel. They don't need you to get on their channel and engage them in a conversation about colorism and how we're victims because they know. They know you're explaining something to somebody who like like they engage in these systems. They propagate these systems. And this is why black women, it's why you and I are colorists towards one another. Where so many black women can be in a room with another black woman who's more beautiful than her, but because she's darker than you, you're not intimidated. Or sometimes you're not intimidated, but you're mad. Because how are you so cute and you're so dark? What the heck? And we move ourselves out the way and accommodate high yellow, red bone, exotical, uh, racially ambiguous, biracial, girls, okay? We do that. We do that as women. We might go for the dark guy with a, I like my men like I like my coffee, strong and black. Yeah, but when it comes to other women, in terms of the way that you treat them and respect them, whatever else, you do the colorism hierarchy thing too because you know that the African-American community may be ran as a matriarchy because that's where the money is, but we're still a black male-centric culture. So the rules are still that of a patriarchy. We worship our men more than any other group of women I've seen around the world. And I dare you to challenge me on that as a globe trotter, as a person who has lived in Saudi Arabia, where people are talking about how, oh, Muslim women know how to treat their men and they this and this for their men. And they're so blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, African-American women worship their men in a way that an Arab woman would never, in the way that an Indonesian woman would never, in the way that a Malaysian woman would never challenge me on that because unlike you, unlike you and your narrow black experience, raised in Indonesian households, raised in Somali households, uh, lived in the Middle East, you, you, you can't have this conversation with me unless your experience is as diverse. And I'm telling you what African-American women are willing to put up with, live with, die with, Women of other cultures that people are lauding as as submissive and and feminine, they would never. Muslim women won't even take their husband's last name. They're like, F you mean, I'm my daddy's daughter. My daddy raised me. You and your last name could take a hike. If that's what you want me to do, I'm not going to do it. When I get married, my name is still going to be Amina Muhammad. My father's name is Muhammad. I'm sorry, you know, Jamal, my last name, I'm not about to be Amina Jenkins. It's not going to happen. I'm never going to be Mrs. Jenkins. They set it out. <laughs> they, 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 they set the stage for themselves. Oh, you want to marry me? You got to, you got to do, do, do. You, you got to do this, 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 this. Or, or it ain't going to be nothing. You would be surprised as w- at what these women are unwilling to put up with. What a lot of people try to pop propagate about these different women, these specific cultures of women, is that which is common among their poorer class. In poverty, there's something that I learned at my university called the culture of poverty. And when I learned about it, I thought it was highly offensive because I was one of those very sensitive, you know, from Seattle social justice warriors. But as an adult, I'm like, yeah, that's true. When you're dealing with a culture of poverty, there are certain things you find all around the world, like prostitution, like people selling their kids. You thought it was weird in Africa when people sold their own into slavery. You you got mothers over here, these crackheads and unfits all over, you know, (laughs) let me stop, unfits all over the place and they sell their kids for, for whatever because of poverty. 
poverty causes kufr or, 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 or disbelief. It, it, it causes the worst nuances of any culture to emerge when you're not covered in something like financial security. So in a community that is so that has such a high proximity to poverty, one of the best ways to protect your daughter from the harm of colorist men is to make her light skin. All these people like, oh, black men, majority, you know, the majority of married black men, married black women anyway. Line those women up, I dare you. Line them up against a wall. Huh? Line them up against a wall. Because half those women being called black women have a white mother, like Tariq Nasheed's wife. Half those women have, a, then, then another group of those women have a white grandmother. Another group of those women, they're, they're, they're black. They bliggity black, but for some reason they came out with green eyes and pale skin. And you keep going and going until you get to, you know, some brown skins. And then you have a minority of dark skinned women who have been wifed. Now you line up a bunch of baby mamas. There are literally memes and jokes about this. There are gifts about this, right? It's like every nigga's first baby mom. And it's a dark skinned chick with bright makeup on and tight clothes. Long nails every single time. Baby mom, not wife. He wants to protect his daughter from what he knows he did to somebody else's dark skinned daughter. Because her worth to him is in her skin. Mocha Mommy said something that is very true from my experience as well as a black woman from the Pacific Northwest, even though she's not from there. She was like, I watched good black women who come from generations of boule, generations of black Greeks to the point where you go to a college campus and there's a library named after the parents of, of, of this woman get passed up for trailer trash Barbie, get passed up for meth and he's strung out on meth and she has nothing to offer but blonde hair and blue eyes. What they would never accept from a black woman, they would accept from these women because they have that complexion to offer. At the end of the day, even if she's a trifling human being, she can still wrap your daughter just by merit of giving birth to your kid, wrap your kid in something that says, hey, treat me better. I'm not all the way black. It's literally the complexion for protection. And these men are trying to protect their kids, especially their daughters, by making them lighter. Now, are they trying to stroke their own ego? Do they look at white women as a trophy? Are white women considered trophies among the black male community? Yes. And this is why I wanted to do a video about how black women and black men do not have the same culture. Sure, certain aspects, the upper echelons of the black community that are free from all the things that I'm saying. Like when I have these general conversations, I'm not speaking on refined black people. I'm not speaking on classy upper echelon elite black people, even though we can talk about you know, some of this is there, but this is not as general for them as it is for the majority at the bottom. It's like a pyramid where it goes from wide to narrow, right? There are divergent cultures. When a black man says, I'm afraid of commitment and I wasn't raised in a married household, so I don't know how, don't know how. And yet his, his black sister was raised in the same household looking to be a married mother. It's like, okay, well, where did we go wrong? We both live here. We both came out of this house. So how? Black men and women, they don't have the same culture. Black men and women, they don't have the same values. Black women, number one educated population in America since 2015. Black men, nigga, that education don't mean nothing over here, nigga. Yeah, you want to come to the teapot debates, nigga? Yeah, D the real nigga, fuck your degree, nigga. That shit don't mean no, nothing over here, nigga. Yeah. 
just because the white man whooped it. We don't, we don't have those opinions. Do we, black women? We don't have those opinions. We see a man like Dee Darrell with a master's degree from an HBCU, and we stand up and, and, and we clap. They're the first one to say, I, I bet D. Darrell has never, ever in his life been told that same thing by a black woman. Oh, your education doesn't mean nothing over here. F your education. Your education ain't ish. Whoop de whoop whoop whoop. Like he's been told by certain areas of black men. We have, we have two different cultures that is cut down the middle across gender. And every time black women try to bridge that gap with black men who are not like them, you get baby mamas. You get single mothers. You get one parent led households. You get welfare WIC section eight. Even though she's got a BA because she tried to reach back and grab, you know, Felonious Farid or, or, or jail time Jamal. And she said, hey, let's, uh, I, I can take you with me. Not so. For a, lot of the, for a lot of the women who are talking about being divested, you know, if you're talking about the definition, definition of divestment, you know that doesn't mean that you're just, you know, all the way done with black men. Don't let people try to, I mean, this is what's wrong with that movement. That movement has been redefined and, and Diddy remixed so many times. Like, no, it's, it's just vowing to stay away from Pookie and Ray Ray. It's deciding that a certain class of black men are none of your business. If he gets a George Floyd knee to the neck, he's none of your business. Unless he's family, your son, your 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 lover, your like like he's none of your business. You look at you look at these men, and it's just like all right, because in reality, in reality, if you, if a dark skin woman and a light skin woman were in a burning building and they had to save one, they'd save the light skin chick. It wouldn't be well. Who's got the better character? Who's more educated? Who's more valuable to the community? It would be that one, the one I can see from <laughs> the one I can see from from a distance who's not blending in with the smoke. Let's save that one. And that's it. So you, as a monoracial black woman who is the color of a brown paper bag or darker, divesting is about leaving those people alone. It doesn't mean you're not, you know, into non-colorist black men who are out there who are unicorns, but who are out there. It just means you're done with that element. You're done with that which, that, that which does not affirm you. You are, you are finished with that, which, that, with that which does not benefit you. You're done with it. It's a shame I, I have to explain these things because I've been around from the beginning. Even as a non-divested woman. I mean, I, pff, sure I'm done with Pookie and Ray Ray. But honestly, what's going on in that movement? Like, I, I have a man. He's not going to let me do he, No. It's a lot of filth. It's a lot of trash. And we're not, we're not those kind of people. There's a lot of filth, trash, low character, like, nah. He wouldn't, um, he wouldn't like that. Now, I could say something like, oh, I'm pink-pilled because she's respectable. She's classy. She's kind. That's a woman. Any man who, who has a brain would be like, oh, wow, that's, that's a 10. That's, that's a perfect woman. We like her. Need more of her. And clearly she is because she landed herself a millionaire, right? 
So her life proves who she is at, you know, 48 years old, that she's still, you know, worth more than some of these teens and 20s who are mean girls who don't know how to act or grow. Pivoting back to the original point, there is only one reason these men are out here. I had a guy who thought I was uh, the sexiest thing on the planet. And I must have sent him a picture of my hair. This is years ago. And he was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. And I was like, what do you mean? He was just like, you know, most black women just don't have good hair, whoop-de-whoop. And he gave me that stereotypical nonsense, right? Because he's not caught up. A lot of men are not caught up on the fact that black women are going natural. And they figure out how to take care of their own hair. And and there's droves of us with waist-length hair. And he was like, I just saw, I just saw, you know, your, your body. I didn't even really care about, you know, your hair. I don't, I don't think about hair unless I'm about to make a daughter. I never talked to him again. I never talked to him again. It just disgusted me so much that they're so willing to be so open like like they're like like this class this specific class of black men are so deeply entrenched and concerned with themselves as white supremacists because that's what they are that that's what they are they're white supremacists they're anti-black that they don't even see they don't even listen to themselves they don't see how silly they sound they don't see how there's nothing attractive about a man who's self-hating there's nothing attractive about a man with false, low or no self-esteem. There's nothing, there's nothing sexy about that. Like if you're super smart and you're super successful and you can buffer that with, with some other great qualities, kudos. But just that, that self-hatred, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Wasn't even ashamed of what he said. And I wasn't going to teach him how to be. I just walked away. You don't got to, I mean, he said it from his own mouth. He knows what he's engaging in. He knows that's anti-black. Stay away from anti-black men because they're the worst of black women. That's all. anti-black men in any culture, if, if he's an anti-black Arab, if he's an anti-black African-American, whatever he is, when you catch that their sentiments are anti-black and you are a monoracial black woman, run. And stop being mad at exoticals for being with these colorists. People are so mad at Rihanna for being with ASAP Rocky. Like, why when she's the preference? Aren't we telling people to go where their audience is? Ain't she light-skinned with green eyes? Aren't you super dark skinned with brown eyes and there's, you know, some white millionaire, some some Mr. E out there for you? It's uh, what we call Crystalline's um, new boyfriend, new handsome Canadian, kind, sweet, well put together boyfriend. We're telling people, go to your audience. ASAP Rocky is her audience. Rappers are her audience. Rappers who talk bad about dark-skinned women, black male entertainers in general, that's her audience. That's where her stock is the highest. I mean, I don't know if it's, it's the highest because she definitely had that uh, Qatari boyfriend, that uh, Arab guy. But I think that's also where she's the most comfortable because again, like for those of you who want to swirl, like as a person who is, has swirled to her heart's content, it, it's difficult swirling ac- across cultures. And it makes me more grateful to be with an African-American man who gets me in my culture, where I come from and the things that I do. Doesn't mean it can't work. It just means it is work to make those things clear. Anyhow, let me know if you got the point. 
Because these men will marry a white woman in a minute, minute, black men in Seattle, and all they cheat with is black girls. All they cheat with is black girls. Every side chick is a black girl. Every sugar baby is a black girl that they ever had. But their wife is white and their daughters are mixed. I tell people that um, my uh, my dad, his his biracial daughter with a white mother is the, is the only child he ever made a sincere effort to take care of. And to, you know, even though he was married to my mom, like he just, being a married black man doesn't necessarily make you valuable. For all intents and purposes, you were just, you know, some hobosexual who didn't look like it because you had a hardworking black woman in your life. And uh, my mixed little sister was just like, bro, I hate you. And I'm changing my last name to my stepdaddy's last name because that's my dad. You're just a sperm donor. And I'm just like, you know, ouch, harsh. But on the other hand, I'm like, you know, he, he deserved that. He deserved that. And what's crazy is, okay, so my parents are divorced. Guess who's going to die alone? Not my mom. Not my mom. She's too valuable to people. She, she can't get no privacy. People, people can't leave her alone. That everybody's in love with her. Myself included, my my newest partner included, and anybody who meets her, it's, it's a done deal. Let alone her being a grandmother, she's got kids and grandkids. Her life, her life has been crowded. My dad's got way more kids than my mom's got. That guy's gonna die alone with nobody by his side. So when you're listening to these people talk about statistics and black women are not married, you're right, they're not married, but they don't die alone, ever. And I don't know what you heard about a 60 or 70 year old woman, but she doesn't need some man huffing and puffing on top of her by that time. What she needs is peace and love. you define alone as being single. We don't. Women are the center of the community. Community. Mm Mom. In Arabic, we say umma. Umma. It means community. You know what mom is in Arabic? Um. My mom, ummi. Ummi. Just like we say, mommy, community, umma. Y'all don't understand. Ancient languages, especially Semitic languages, like they're just, they're, they're, they're so intuitive. It's crazy. They're so, uh, they're, they're, there's a, an objective reality behind ancient languages that you can't escape. Mom literally gives birth to the community. You have, you know, Somalis that are super duper Muslim and everything is about, you know, the dad's lineage, blah, blah, blah. But their culture pre-Islam, due to their pre-Islamic culture, when you find somebody who is, you know, Mijartan and Hawiye, Ishaq, it's like, oh, well, what, 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 uh, what group within the group are you? And it's all habr, habr this, habr that. It's not apti. It's not awowo. It's not abo. Right? That's like dad, uncle, this. No, it's all habr. Habr. Habr is like auntie. 
Oh, I come from this tribe. I'm Haber Yonis. I'm Haber Gitri. I'm Haber whatever, whatever, whatever. But Haber. We come from this woman. We come from this woman. We come from this woman. Of course, you know, they're like, you know, when you say your lineage in Islam, it's like, I am this person. That I'm the daughter of this man who was the son of this man who was the son of this man who was the son of this man, right? They sing songs in order to learn, you know, all of their, their grandfathers, right? So that they don't, uh, that there, there's no broken chain and lineage. It's, it's really beautiful. But the actual names of tribes is, is, after, is after women. Or not tribes, but like sub-clans within a tribe. It's named after women. Folk might not know who your daddy is, but they can't mistake who your mama is. <laughs> she carried you. Stretch marks to prove it. <sighs> oh, this became a conversation about a whole lot of stuff. This is only supposed to be about colorism. And there I go with my long-winded self. It's half an hour. All right, y'all. So that's what that is. They're literally trying to save their daughters from the level of misogyny that they inflict on other women who are your color and mine by making them look different than us. Not even act different because they're not raising. So many of them are not raising these kids. But if she looks different, she'll be all right. So they know. They know their color is. They know the consequences. It's light-skinned wives, dark-skinned baby mamas. Uppity in a mouth.